You might love recording in 422 10-bit in the Bees Knees Hall of Fame when it comes to file sizes, and your video editor is probably sick of you, especially if you're sending over 50, 70, 100 plus gigabyte file sizes, especially if you're in a course content creation and stuff like that, or maybe you're sick of yourself and dealing with the waiting game of waiting for Final Cut Pro to come up with proxy files, and it's just, it's just a mess. But that stops right now, because today we're done with it. Now, the only thing you're going to need is your SD card, hopefully an SD card reader and pro tip right before we even jump into things, use the SD card reader for the kind of card brand you use if you're working with really large files, because those will transfer the files the best to your computer or to an SSD drive and have your folder system already set up or at least some space to work with in order for you to do this. But if you got that stuff, let's get into it. On your computer, you want to go to where you have your SD card. If it's just the base like SanDisk or anybody else card, you want to go there with Sony proxy files. You want to go to your private. Then usually you're going to the M4 root for your regular videos and you would hit clip. And these are where your regular high quality full video files are. But we actually want to go to the subfolder. This is where all of our proxy files live. Once you know all the video files that you want to remove here within Final Cut, you can either select all of them, hit Command A, whatever floats your boat or find your lost remote. Let's just say I'm gonna work with 5713 is the file. All of these have that S zero and then three there. We wanna actually remove that. So you can click rename and just delete those three. Or if you're working with a lot of video files, you'll still select them, select rename, and type in S03. I still keep this very specific and you wanna make sure your caps is on for that. So capital S and select replace it with nothing. Depending on if you've used this before, you just wanna make sure that is selected to replace text. Then from here, we wanna select rename, but pause for the calls. Before you do that, if you're gonna be editing from your SSD drive, go ahead and make sure that you put your proxy files wherever you need them to be at in a dedicated folder separate from the full resolution files. We need Final Cut Pro to clearly be able to tell the difference between the proxies and the real full scale files. For this example, I'm gonna keep this over here on the SD card, and we're just gonna work with this one, keep it easy, and just remove these three digits so that I know I have this file, and then I like to kind of mark mine so I know that that's the file that I'm working with. So with your root files where you need them saved and your proxy files saved in a different folder, once you remove those three digits on the end, now we wanna move over into Final Cut Pro and start with your projects normally how you would edit in your regular base of operations. I just have my basic project file here. Now you can go to file and then select import media and that way you can specifically select the file that you want. You just wanna make sure that if you haven't played with this yet um, and you're not sure where your settings are, go ahead and go this route so you can go down here to transcode and deselect create proxy media because we don't need Final Cut creating proxy files for us. So just double check that. And then from here, you can drag and drop your footage in as you see fit. The easiest way I like to drag and drop my files in is just go back to this M4 root, go to the clip, go to the specific main high resolution file that I want, and I'll drag that over into the project over in Final Cut Pro. Once we're here in Final Cut Pro and we have our main file here, we don't have the proxy file yet. And the way that you can always tell that, go up here to view and proxy only, and you'll see we'll get that red kind of message. And you'll know that anytime you see that, you're missing the proxy file. So that's why you wanted to keep these folders separate. So let's go back to original. So we know we have this file. With the original file in Final Cut Pro, I just wanna make sure I have that file or those files selected. Then I'll come up here and I'll go to relink and then proxy media since I just need to relink this. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. I just like to select the locate all so it picks all of the files that need a proxy file. Come to where I have those saved, which is why we wanted that different folder. It's either select it or you literally just can select the folder and Final Cut is smart enough to figure that out on its own. Once you see there's no more files up here in the top, then you know you're good. It relinks the files. Give it a couple seconds here. Now, if we go back up here to view pro tip, if you ever wanna just edit specifically from proxies only, select up here to proxy. And now we don't have the red message of death. So you can drag and drop this file down to your timeline and you're good to go and start working with that. 
again, the resolution is going to be lower. So we want to make sure that we're working with the proxy, not the original. If you're doing any kind of color grading, you want to make sure you switch it to the original so you can actually see the real stuff. And then when you're ready to just get into the proxies, then just switch here. Now, here's another pro tip. If you have the ability in your camera, like on the Sony a6700 or the ZV-E1, you have the ability to choose the type of proxy files that you want to bring in. Most cameras are kind of like this with the Sony setup. I like to use the 720p file if that's like a throwaway file and we literally are only using it for a proxy and then we're moving on. If we ever need to kind of export out quickly, we're working from an event and we need to crank out content a lot, especially like posting it on social media, then at that point I'll increase the quality of the proxy file and we literally can edit from that throw on a light color grade and we're off to the races. That's also really good if you are working with clients and they want to see the progress of a big project or something like that. Have them start to send you proxy files. You can throw in that light color grade or what have you and export that smaller file size out, still have the high quality one on reserve and then be able to actually move on because if you're just kind of getting feedback and stuff like that, you can sometimes work with those smaller file sizes. Now, if you notice in that file I only had like a small section where there's audio, so that's really like the usable bit. And if you ever just need to export a small section of a video out, make sure you check out the video on the screen. I'll walk you through exactly how to do that inside Final Cut Pro as well.